So we're going to get straight on with line 43 up to line 67. And it starts with the second witch saying, By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks whoever knocks. Um, now, some, this something wicked this way coming, straight after she says this, Macbeth arrives. Um, so we can tell from this that the witches have real powers of prediction, meaning that the predictions that they're about to make about Macbeth's future um, will be just as true as this one. The fact that she calls Macbeth something wicked is noteworthy because it just it shows just how evil Macbeth is that this evil satanic diabolical woman sees him as wicked. And you've got another internal rhyme here, um, again, giving an idea of this being a spell and the power of words. It's not the uh, most polite of greetings, you secret black and midnight hags that Macbeth says to the witches. And they reply to him when he says, what is it that you do? What are you doing? They say a deed without a name, something so awful it can't be said aloud. Um, but Macbeth doesn't heed that this is so awful it can't be said aloud. He just goes straight on to tell them um that they need to um, tell him about his future. And notice here that he is commanding. When he says, I conjure, it's not technically a grammatical imperative, but it is a command. And then he uses these imperatives, answer me, answer me. And then he uses another imperative below, call him, and then let, in let me see him, that is another imperative. So again, as I mentioned last lesson, Macbeth consistently tries to use imperatives, commands of the forces of darkness, and it just doesn't work. They're more powerful than him. Now, he says that the witches untie the winds and let them fight against the churches. Um, and this is a metaphor. So the witches have um, created this storm. Um, but also there's a metaphor here of the idea of the fight between good and evil. This idea of the witches creating a storm at sea, um, there's a bit of a contextual um, point going on here. Because one of the things that made King James the first and sixth of Scotland such a strong believer in witches was the fact that his wife Queen Anne when he, she set sail from Denmark in order to marry him um, was set back by a terrible storm so terrible that he enlisted the whole of Scotland to pray for her safe passage um, and he blamed it on witches what a lovely man um, We've got another internal rhyme here, blown down, and notice that it would have been a full rhyme, pronounced something like blown down in Shakespeare's time. And notice here that Macbeth is starting to use the same language tech devices as the witches use. Open locks whoever knocks, and Macbeth says blown down. Um, there is a naphora up here, and everyone, and now, and Macbeth starts using a naphora here. The witches used plosives earlier, as I pointed out um, in the last video. And Macbeth says palaces and pyramids. And all of these things could imply that the witches are having some sort of subconscious influence on him, that their wickedness is seeping into him. Um, so he goes on at the end of the speech, answer me to what I ask you. And the witches respond with some instructions of their own. They say, speak, demand. So they're using their own imperatives. Say, if thou wouldst hear it rather from our mouths or from our masters. So do you want to hear it from us or from these spirits that we're going to conjure up? Um, so they answer his command with a command. Um, and this is just one of the ways in the which the witches, in they pretend not to be controlling Macbeth. Um, but it could be argued that they really are and that they're telling him to speak. And they're almost hiding the fact that they're commanding him by just saying, oh, speak, you know, tell us what you command. But actually, they're the ones in charge. Um, so Macbeth agrees. He says, call up these spirits. Um, 
And that calls for another little spell in order to get the spirits to arrive. And the spell involves pouring a pig's blood, so a female pig's blood into, but not just any pig's blood. It's a pig that has eaten her nine children. So first of all, there's an echo of Lady Macbeth's dead children or dead child. Um, we don't know for sure how many children she had, but at least one. Um that I mentioned in the last video. But also this idea of nine is a foreshadowing of one of the visions that Macbeth will be shown by the witches later in the scene, um, where he sees Banquo and a line of eight of Banquo's descendants, all kings behind him. But as I mentioned to you with the witches, everything is the opposite of what it should be. So instead of being um, male Banquo, male human Banquo, we've got a female pig and nine children. Um, and in actual fact, we've got one more in the mix here because we've got nine plus the sow, whereas with Banquo, we've just got Banquo plus eight descendants. And then also how appropriate um, for a spell to bring up Macbeth's future. Um, you've got a murderer's, the sweat of a murderer is also being thrown into the pot. And as we know, Macbeth himself is already a murderer. And as a result of the witch's predictions, will go on to murder more and more. Um, so then come high or low, thyself and office deftly show. Um, so the witches are calling forth these three apparitions, these three evil spirits to make the predictions for Macbeth. We'll look at those next lesson.